Welcome to everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to change V-Rod shift shaft. I have here brand new my own shift shaft and I have here also 2006 Screaming Eagle V-Rod where it's clearly seen that there is something wrong with the shaft as the shift arm is not uh, positioned directly straight to bottom as it should be but it says bent backwards it's more than clear that something is very wrong with this and uh, probably the shaft is bent it might be still in one piece but uh, it's bent it means that it must be replaced immediately there is absolutely no option that I'm going to give a bike like this for a customer where the shaft is bent and uh, for that I'm going to show you how to do it actually before I start with this bike I have another 2006 Screaming Eagle V-Rod here with me where the shaft is broken, arm is off and the shaft is still inside the engine. As always the gear is in and uh, I will show you that uh, how you can put the bike to a neutral first and you, so you can just uh, move the bike freely. Let's take a look how it goes. The first thing what I'm going to do now is I grab the broken shaft with the uh, locking pliers. Second step is that I lift the bike up from the chief stand. As the gear is in, I'm pushing it slightly back and forth, and at the same time, I'm turning the shaft. So, as you see, it's on neutral now. Bike is moving freely and now it's easy to operate with it. And all you need is locking pliers, that's it. Now it's time to start with the shaft replacement. What we need for that is brake cleaner for cleaning up the area from all kind of uh, dirt and dust. Then you need 5mm Allen key to remove three pulley cover bolts then the next thing you need uh, is a 10 millimeter uh, spanner then you can uh, easily remove the shifter arm then uh, next thing uh, what you need is uh, lock ring pliers after removing the first uh, lock ring by the by the manual it said that uh, you should uh, drill a hole put the screw in and uh, turn the oil seal off but uh, it's needed only when uh, you want to reuse uh, the shaft so that just to avoid any kind of damage on the oil seal surface on the shaft but as it's bent anyway I'm not going to use this shaft absolutely anyway it's 100% uh, it's clear that it's going to garbage so I, I'm using actually this screwdriver I haven't uh, decided yet which one I'm going to use uh, bigger or smaller but I will hit the screwdriver between the shaft and the oil seal and I simply just turn it out uh, and uh, and uh, I have access to the second uh, lock ring and, uh, and uh, of course uh, before I take the second lock ring away and shaft out uh, I will clean up again this area uh, with brake cleaner and a little bit air pressure as well and then I will uh, uh, very gently I will uh, pull the shaft out and uh, I will uh, put the new shaft in with uh, Screaming Eagle Sun free engine oil after this I put back the first uh, lock ring and uh, then I will install the oil seal again I make it uh, together with uh, Sun Free Engine Oil and I'm using uh, 11 16th uh, socket uh, to knock it uh, to its uh, position and then, then goes in the uh, outer lock ring and then already shifter arm but uh, as you can see the shifter arm is uh, looking backwards here it's not correct this way it should be directly facing down to the bottom so this, this must be put back to correct location and when you have broken shaft then you need uh, pliers to get the broken piece out from the shifter arm as well. We don't need it here so let's see how it goes. Shifter arm lock bolt is out. So oh, now it's time to clean it up. I put some paper 
around it here to avoid breaking or flying away too much. Then I use a little brush. So the biggest dirt is away now, a little bit air pressure. This is clean. It's time to take the first block ring away. The outer one is silver, inner one is black. So here we have it. First one here. Now it's time to take the oil seal away. I, I try with smaller screwdriver first. I will uh, hit it uh, bit between the shaft and oil seal. First attempt failed. Let's try again. And off it comes. Very simple. So, old oil seal is out. Now it's time to clean with brake cleaner and brush again. The cleaner it is, the better it is. It's important that no sand or no dirt or nothing gets inside the engine. Time to take the second lock ring away. So, second lock ring is out. Let's clean it up a little bit. There is absolutely no need to replace the lock rings. Nothing happens with it. They just put the old ones back and they are good to go. Again, a little bit brake cleaner for cleaning up the area inside. And now very gently, it's time to pull out the old shaft. If, if the shaft is broken, grab uh, with the pliers from the broken end and just gently pull it out. And I always do it on, uh, on neutral during the removal. The end part of the shift shaft uh, is moving away slightly uh, from the center thanks to spring pressure. So when you put the new shaft in, you just have to grab it from the side, pull the end part uh, to the middle and then push the shaft uh, directly in. Now I will put some uh, swim free engine oil. Uh, with my fingertip in the transmission case so that it's all lubricated well and shaft is going in as smoothly as possible so I make the inner splines uh, oily as well the more oil there, there is that easier it, it will go together at the end of the day new shaft ready to go uh, as you see it's at the moment out from the center now I push it till the end it, and I will uh, pull it, pull the shaft with the inner part to the center and then I can push it in and it's in its final position. Very simple. Now I will put back the inner lock ring. Perfect. Now it's time to put the new oil seal in. I always include a new oil seal with the shaft. So you don't have to worry about anything, just when you get the parts from me then you have everything you need. Just put it together with new engine oil and you are happy to go. Now I will push it in with the 11 16th socket. Needs a little bit knocking as well. And perfect. Now it's time to put the outer lock ring in. Perfect again. Now we put a little bit engine oil to the splines here as well on the shaft. 
so that everything is going together as smoothly as possible. As I said before, it's extremely important that the shifter arm is going clean so that uh, it's vertical perfectly. Couldn't be any better. As you see, it was extremely simple. Shaft is replaced. I don't need uh, to put the cover on because I will take this bike for pieces, but otherwise just put the front pulley cover back on. 9.7 Newton meters is the torque for those three bolts and you're ready to go. It's very, very simple operation. Maximum five minutes and you are good to go again. Another thing that I'm going to make on this bike now is uh, I'm going to install, as always, five gallon fuel tank as well and what's the best part on my five gallon gas tanks is that there's everything included with the tank you don't have to relocate absolutely nothing there's everything you have uh, for installation from cutting disc because you have to just cut away the front part of the frame extension on the bottom and uh, you have paint to repaint the edge what you were cutting away so that there will be absolutely no corrosion problems another uh, big thing what you have included is the tool for the top nut what's a big bonus uh, on the top nut tool is that uh, you can uh, tighten it up with reasonable torque factory says top nut have to be closed uh, with torque uh, from from 40 to 45 foot pounds but it's uh, way too over tightened the point on this top nut is exactly the same like an oil filter it as oil filter should be hand tightened so that you can uh, loosen it uh, with the hand as well uh, in a perfect scenario the same way should be tightened up the top nut as well there is no need to go with the hardcore torque uh, like the factory says because absolutely nothing happens with this there is, there is very thick squaring uh, under the nut and uh, if you just uh, hand tighten it with reasonable torque, there is absolutely no need to worry about anything. Just again, if you have old bike from 2002 to 2006, then five gallon gas tank is the best thing what you can add for your bike. You don't have to worry about uh, gas station stops every 50 miles. One more thing what I would like to tell you is that uh, when you're replacing shift shaft or whatever you are doing, Please take a look at your front engine mount. I have like 90% of bikes what I'm getting from states there are with riding with broken uh, front engine mount and it's not the best option what you can do. It's front engine mount can cause you so much trouble that uh, you might start to have a coolant leak thanks to extra pressure on the coolant hoses. You might start to have a oil leak thanks to extra pressure on uh, oil pipes from the oil cooler and it, it can cause you whatever issues uh, on exhaust it can start touching the frame whatever and plus your oil pan is getting lower than the frame thanks for that you, you might hit something uh, uh, with the oil pan please take a look at your front engine mount it is wise to keep an eye on it because uh, it's a very problematic uh, place on V roads it's easy fix it's simple to re replace it, I will show you some other time, but please keep an eye on it. On this bike, front engine mount is like 75% dead, it's still holding it together. On the red uh, Screaming Eagle V-Rod, it's already dead. You see that the engine mount has been uh, fallen to the bottom and it must be replaced immediately on both of these bikes. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, bye bye.